Assalamu alaikum. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the transport systems in living organisms. And we are specifically talking about the circulatory fluid, the blood, in human beings. We will concentrate on the blood systems, uh, blood, the circulatory fluid, and its contents in human beings. We start with what is transport and why the transport systems are required. Why transport system? Why the organisms need a transport system? Organisms have to exchange materials with their surroundings, with their environments, because they have to live in the environment, sustain themselves in the environment. They have to exchange materials from time to time with the environment. Also, they need to distribute different materials present within their own body uh, from one part of the body to another part of the body. And they have to uh, sometimes uh, remove their metabolic waste products. For all of these things, they need transport systems which can transport materials from the organism to the environment and back and from one part of the body to another part of the body and back and so on. The living organisms have to acquire energy for, or food from the environment. Then they have to distribute that food or uh, that energy to all parts of their body. Organisms need an intake of different uh, gases, particularly oxygen. Intake of air, that includes oxygen. They need to remove carbon dioxide from their body that is uh, produced as a uh, byproduct or waste product of the respiration process. They need to remove the metabolic and toxic wastes, the toxic materials which are produced as the byproduct of metabolism and, um, and also uh, some other toxic materials which are somehow invaded the body or which are uh, produced by the metabolism, uh, which are the products of catabolism. Uh, they have to sometimes move these particles, these toxic or maybe um, unwanted particles from one part of the body to another part of the body and then they have to release it into the environment. They have to distribute hormones, other chemicals, enzymes from sometimes one part of the cell to another part of the cell, sometimes from cell to uh, blood and from blood to other organs. Uh, organisms also have to exchange materials with the environment. That is products of their uh, uh, metabolism, the toxic waste, the uh, nitrogenous waste and all. For all of these things, organisms need a transport system that can exchange materials with the environment and with, within the body of organism from one part to another part. Now as we know that organisms are of various kinds. There is a huge variety of organisms present in the universe, in the biosphere. Organisms are very small, from unicellular to very, very complex multicellular as us human beings. Some organisms are very small, just consist of one cell, unicellular. For example, amoeba. Amoeba is a unicellular organism that consists of only one cell. It also have to exchange its materials with the environment and it is exposed directly to the external environment and it have to exchange all the materials with the environment. And uh, we have simple multicellular organisms which are larger but which have simpler layers of cells which makes their body. For example, sponges uh, which have two layers of their um, uh, body, which have two layers of cells which makes their body, the ectoderm and the endoderm. These also have to exchange materials with the environment. Their way is different from that of unicellular organisms. And we have uh, organisms which are as complex as the higher plants and the animals, which have a lot many cells, millions or billions of cells in their body. And they have to exchange materials from um, maybe thousand cells, a million cells, um, uh, have to exchange materials with each other and with the environment. So, 
the transport systems are adapted according to the need of the organism that how complex is the organism and in which environment it is living. If we look at the diagram of an amoeba, amoeba as we know is unicellular organism and uh, lives in fresh water. It have to exchange its materials though its functions are simple. It have to uh, take food from the environment, acquire food from the environment and it have to remove the toxic waste of metabol metabolism and it have to distribute the food acquired from the environment inside its body. For this purpose, uh, amoeba uh, makes food vacuoles. When it gets to touch uh, a food particle, a smaller organism may be, then its membrane, its cell membrane invaginates and due to this invagination, it entraps the food particle inside with some water. This is called a food vacuole. This food vacuole then due to the cytoskeletal elements present inside the amoeba's uh, uh, body, the cell, moves from one place to another place inside the cell. There are different types of cytoskeletal filaments which help it, help its movement. For example, uh, the actin filaments, which are also called the uh, microfilaments which help in movement of this food vacuole from one place to another place um, and uh, with the time being uh, a lysosome come, pour its enzymes and food is digested. Then the vacuole moves inside the body due to this cytoplasmic movement uh, with the help of cytoskeletal uh, filaments, the microfilaments and distribute that digested food in the body. Then it have to remove water from its body because it's living in fresh water. It is exposed to a, a lot, a much quantity of water. Um, so a hypotonic solution we can say. So what can, what could happen? Water rushes inside its body because salt concentration is more inside. Water moves inside. Uh, to cater the situation, um, amoeba have another transport system called contractile vacuole, which fills up with water which absorb water from its surrounding inside the body of amoeba, fills up with water. When it fills up, then it removes through a pore that water outside the body. It have a pore, it is associate with a, associated with a pore in the cell membrane. And when it, when it is filled, it removes the water towards surrounding. It is continuously actively doing it with the help of ATP as energy. So even unicellular organisms, they have certain transport systems which help them in transport of material. 